there is hell, oh, he's here, Jesus. Take your place. Hallelujah. You may take your seats in the presence of God. It's a great honor and a privilege from the Lord to be able to minister. This message that I bring to you today was to have come two weeks ago. Two weeks, about, this is the third, like three weeks ago. And, um, and how many know that when you are sick, and that you cannot do nothing unless the hand of God is upon you. And therefore today I rejoice in the Lord for the great things that he has done. We began a series on revival because revival is coming. Amen. This is the fourth ingredient for revival, which is hunger. 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 And the title of this message this day is Reviving Your Hunger for God. Reviving My Hunger for God. Reviving your hunger for God. And we have been in the series, this is the last of the series, part one. We looked at the, the without repentance. Repentance is the first ingredient for revival. We got to turn back to God. We got to acknowledge that with sin we are going nowhere. The second ingredient of revival is brokenness broken spirit a humble spirit is what God is looking for the third ingredient of revival which I spoke to you about is holiness that God is a God God is holy God is holy that God we talk about is holy and without holiness no one will see him and finally, the last ingredient for revival is hunger. Amen? Hunger. Hunger for God. Hunger. Hunger for God. Remember, we've been saying that the awakening is coming. The awakening comes in communities, in neighborhoods, in a nation. But without revival in the church, revival begins in your heart. Revival is for the church, God's people, awakening is in the world to those who don't even know him, to those who do not even follow him, to those who are still lost, to those who are bound. That's what the awakening is about. Now, you and I were created with an empty space, a, a, a vacuum in your heart. There's an empty space which God fills. It's for God. If God is not in that space, something will be there. Something will be else will be competing. Greed, lust, alcoholism, you know, all manner of things. Addiction, illicit sex, manipulation and control and witchcraft, jealousy and envy, bitterness, you know, bile. You know, in Kikuyu they call it a koro. Have you ever had people with bad heart, Rohombaya? Eh? Let me tell you, that person was created with a space for God. But because God is not in it, anything can be in, in, inside that heart. David is our subject today. He's an example of a hunger for God. And in the scripture reference, that we are going to have today is Psalm 63, verse 1 in the Amplified Version. I would like us to read that. It's on the screen. Bible says, Oh God, you are my God. Honestly, will I seek you? My inner self thirsts for you. My flesh longs and is faint for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Deepest longings, that's hunger. Your soul thirsting, having no peace until you get that peace. Now, let me tell you, I understand this cry of desperation that I'm talking to you about. And I'm going to explain it with my own personal testimony. 
I was still a young girl and I was not born again yet. I was married. Already the first born was born and the second born was born. Very young kids. And that time, my husband was working outside Nairobi. He would come after two weeks or three weeks. And I was addicted to nicotine, cigarettes, in a crazy manner. Alcohol, of course, that was obvious. But cigarettes, it was a crave. I remember when I taught in my school, if I came to the staff room and the ashtray has been moved, let me tell you, it's war. Who touched my ashtray? Just the ashtray. You can imagine what sort of a teacher this was. You went to a classroom and the smell because of bondage. So one time, I put the kids to sleep and uh, my husband is not in and I'm praying, I've been, I've been wanting, I, I, I want to get out of this pit, but I can't get out. I want to stop, but I can't. I'd tried so many times, I'm so bound. So I said, I want to make sure after dinner, I make sure I've smoked all cigarettes. I don't want to go to bed with muzos. So, so that I, that addiction, I'm trying to get out. I'm bound, but I don't know that I'm bound. So this night, the kids are asleep. I'm woken up by a craving for smoking, for, for nicotine. And those of you who have ever smoked or are smoking, you know that you're not woken up by a craving for smoking. Once you sleep, You've slept. It's the one that wakes you up in the morning to open your eyes. But at 1 a.m., exactly, I'm woken up by this craving. Remember, I have none. I have no cigarettes anymore. So I have to go to the trash bin in the kitchen underneath the sink, which is full of leftover food and takataka inside the trash to get those filters, to find if there is one which I that, that did not quite get to the end. And I'm scrambling in between tea leaves and all manner of trash in that basket, but that bucket. And I, as, I, as my head was there looking for that filter, I got a vision. Remember, I don't go to any church. So I get a vision of the street boys. You know how the street boys put their heads inside the the beans. So I saw, I saw that that's me. I could see it is me there. And I saw what I have come down to, what I have I've been reduced to. I was so desperate. And I remember there, I cried. I cried, my God. Right there in that kitchen. I'm crying. Because I hate what I have become. I hate myself. But yet I can't get out. I'm stuck. It didn't happen that night. But God had the cry. I didn't know. All this I do not know. A few meters from where we lived, there was an SEK church. So on Sunday, one Sunday, one of the Sundays, I don't even know which one, I took the kids. And by the way, one of them is here. She doesn't know this story, I'm sure. So I took the kids, and I'm walking. One is on my back, and the other one is struggling, walking with me. As I entered the church compound, because I don't even know service time, so of course I'm late. And there is a hymn they were singing. As I entered through the door, I began crying. I just saw myself cry. I don't even know why I'm crying. I don't know that the Holy Spirit is upon me. The conviction 
Let me tell you, those addictions, the, the chains, only God can set you free. I tell you, nobody. Satan's assignment is to steal, kill, and destroy you. He makes you nothing. You can work so hard, but you will get nothing. You can even try to succeed, but he will kill you in a car accident. So, I was just crying. I didn't even hear any preaching. And I remember one of the girls, the older one, was asking me, why are you crying? And I couldn't tell her, why am I crying? It didn't happen then. Because the Lord knew when the day I'm coming to the Lord. So that's when it now happened in the Matatu story that you know. What am I saying? It's about that desperate cry. You need to come to that place where you realize you cannot do it on your own. I tell you, it is God who changes the life of a person. God can transform your life. Let me tell you, when I was set free from that addiction, there is no day ever I, I miss cigarettes. Never. So the, after I got saved, it was on a Tuesday. Wednesday, I'm going to school. The guy who sold cigarettes outside the school where I taught knew me. That was my stop. So when I'm passing, and I need higher away, customer. Can you imagine? My life was changed for good. So this desperation, hunger. So when I was crying there, I didn't realize that's when I got a hunger. But I didn't know I have hunger for God. Hunger is an action that pushes you it, to the object of that thing which will satisfy you. For example, when you are hungry for food, you have to find food. You are starving. You got to get it. In the same way in spiritual hunger, it can only be satisfied by God. No one else. No one else. And you will never have peace. Let me tell you, the day I gave my life to Jesus, you know I was such a bound woman. I had so many problems. One, the addictions. C can you imagine my life with this man? We are married with children. Friday, Saturday, we're in the club. And when we go there, we'll have fought. We come back. I remember there's a time. Because I will not sit there to be beaten. Are you getting? Hey. I knew how to fight. No, it's true, the truth. So I will not sit to be beaten at Shua, Shukau. So it means it's got to be a fight. So can you, I want to see, I want you to see this picture of a couple. You are married. You have children. You fight like cats and dogs. Let me tell you, there is a, a dress, I, we went out on a Friday night. I was wearing a yellow dress, yellow and cream. I'll never forget that dress. I'm telling you, we fought in the car. You know, it's alcohol is madness. Are you getting? Ni wazimu. So we are fighting in the car. I don't even know why we are fighting. We, we got out of the car. It's 2 a.m. Can you imagine now you fought in the car? Now you get out of the car. So on the roadside is soil. So we fought there on the soil like animals. What is it? Can you see what the devil was going to do to us? By the time I was getting saved, I'd already decided I'm leaving this guy. In fact, I would look at him and I wonder, what is this? Who, who is this? You know, there's nothing. You know, unless the Lord comes to in your life, you are trash. You are trash. So I want to say that when the Lord is talking to us about hunger, hunger for God, hunger, you need to have hunger for God. David 
was such a man. He was a man after God's own heart. And I want to share with you the benefits of hunger. Benefits of hunger. Number one, hunger for God keeps you on track with God's plan for your life. Hunger for God keeps you on track with God's plan for your life. That means when you remain hungry for God, you know, each one of us, when you are born to this world, there is a plan that God has for your life. And that plan is fought by Satan from day one. He doesn't want you to fulfill it. So he will make, do, he will make sure you live a different life. But when you remain hunger, hungry for God, even when you're born again, you will not be distracted. You will follow God's plan for your life. Did you know that every, everyone has seasons? You have a sowing season. Where to you are just planting. You are giving, giving, giving yourself. Giving, you know, it's like everything is just being taken away. Your time, your energy, your skills, your money, your heart, your love, everything. Sowing. It is an investment time. It's time for you to add value to yourself. Sowing, sowing season. And you've got to know which season that is. Then there is a pruning season where God is cutting. You know the way a farmer prunes, cuts off some branches, it's very painful. Because in every, there are people you will not go to the next season with. At every point in time, you must separate from people. There are people that are not on the path that you're supposed to be on. However, it doesn't matter how handsome they are, it doesn't matter how, how they help you. It doesn't matter who they are or they have which name or class. I tell you and you know, you even as I'm talking right now, you know people that you must break that relationship from. Otherwise, you will never meet with God's plan for your life. Then, of course, there's the waiting season. You wait like a farmer waits for the crops to grow. It doesn't matter how impatient the farmer is. The farmer must wait to have a season. The same way with you. You got to wait. And when you're waiting, remember that one who had planted earlier is already harvesting. Yours is still at three quarter. You have to wait. It's the same thing with your life. And then finally the harvest season that comes. Hunger so benefit number one is that hunger keeps you on track. Second benefit, number two, hunger for God delivers you from childishness. Utoto na ujinga. Are you there? Hunger for God delivers you from childishness. <clears throat> you know the church has so many immature, spiritually immature people. Someone said, I had a preacher say many years back that the church of Jesus is so wide, like we have so many churches, so many Christians. This wide, but this deep. Half inch. Very spiritually immature people. There are spiritual immature people that are apostles and bishops. An infant teaching an infant. Are you getting my point? Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14, the Bible says, Amplified version, so that we are no longer children, spiritual immature, tossed back and forth like ships on a stormy sea and carried about by every wind of shifting doctrine, by the cunning trickery of unscrupulous men. Like for example, how is it that you have been saved for so many years? And somebody tells you, this oil, you buy the, this oil, buy this oil, it will deliver you. You need this handkerchief. You are mad. Are you getting my point? Do you know why Kenya is like that? Do you know why we are so 
we, Kenya is uh, attractive to false prophets because of spiritual immature Christians. You don't want to study the word. Utaki kuchoka. Utakuambio tu abracadabra. Receive it. 310. 310. Send this money. You will get the miracle. How? Prophecy. Like now. During elections. Prophecies are flying that way. Prophecies are flying this way. But you know. <laughs> These days the prophets of today. They are in a car. You know the Lord was talking to me as God is high and mighty. Holy. You think God just talks of your view. And God told me, God told me, God told me, God told me. Like he's a small boy. Immature children in the church of Jesus. Are you with me? Hunger for God would deliver you from childishness. The third benefit of hunger for God. Hunger for God enables you to spring back after mistakes and failure. Let me tell you, you cannot av avoid making mistakes. You cannot avoid failure because no one is perfect. We are imperfect. You will always fail. You will fail a friend. You will fail your spouse. You will fail in your finances. Maybe your business. You made a decision and it took you to debt. You will fail God. You will fail God. You know God. This was not right. But you were not meant to remain in that pit. No. You were not meant to remain there. It is Satan who wants to keep you bound. You do not remain in that dark and dangerous pit. You know, David made so many mistakes in life. But there is this one mistake he made. He wanted the Ark of the Covenant, that tabernacle, to come from Kiriath Jiriam, where the Philistines had left it. You know, there's a time Israel lost the battle. You know, actually, they had carried the Ark of God to the battlefield thinking that that box is going to deliver them. They were not bothered about the presence of God. They were not bothered about this God, so they think that this box can go and deliver them. That's what you do with religion. You think that just because you are attending a church that you will be delivered. No way. Obedience is key. And so David wants to bring the ark from Kiriath Jiriam to Jerusalem, the capital. And they arraign themselves, they are ready, they are dancing. He had put the, car, the tabernacle on a new cart, you know, mkokoteni. So that's the way it was being pushed. And then there's a guy called, there's Uza, and then there's another guy who's walking in front of it. So then the cart reached a place where it was unstable ground. And the cart was going like to, he thought that the, the ark was going to fall. So what does Uza do? He stretches out his hand and touches the ark. God struck him dead right there. He died on the spot. David was shocked and crushed. Imagine such a failure in a nation. But because of hunger for God, if you continue in 2 Samuel chapter 6, you will realize that later on, he still went back to pick it. And this time, he did it the right way. God is a God of a second chance. God gives you a chance over and over and over again. Do not allow that failure to keep you stuck. Do not allow that mistake. No, we all make mistakes. Do you know how many mistakes I make? And I have a title called Reverend. Do you know how many? So do not allow Satan to condemn you. Hunger for God will enable you to spring back with resilience and tenacity after mistakes and failure. Bible says in Proverbs 24 verse 16, in the Amplified Version, for a righteous man falls seven times and rises up again. But it is the wicked that stumble in disaster and collapse, but never 
the righteous people. You can fall, but you rise again. Your business can shut, but it will come back again. All your animals can die, but they will come back again. You can lose a whole crop, crop failure. You planted wheat or you planted whatever, and you lose that completely. You lose that market, but you will rise up again. That's a righteous man. We never stay in the pit. We rise up again. Oh, we arise again. Oh, blessed is the man whose sin is forgiven. I tell you, we never remain in the pit. We come out of the pit because he's the one who gets us out of the pit. Are you there? It is Pharisees. You know, Pharisees, they're the ones who want you to stay in the pit. Please do not ever want to have that spirit of Pharisees. They are judgmental. They're the ones who judge people. Who you is like that. The other one is like, and they forget that that same finger is pointing to them. Amen? The fourth benefit for hunger for God is that hunger for God supplies to your physical needs. Physical needs, food, shelter, clothing, long life, security, joy, friends, associates, businesses, favor, hunger for God. Let me tell you, there is no way. You know David said something. In Psalm 37, verse 25 to 26, I did not quote this scripture in first service. I was young, and now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. They are always generous, and they lend freely. And their children, hey, will be a blessing. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Bible says in Psalm 23, David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Isn't it? Do you know that Jesus is the chief shepherd? But a shepherd, this kind of shepherd, our God, he only takes care of sheep, not goats. There are two types of flock. You decide whether you are a goat or you are a sheep. Have you ever seen when sheep are crossing the road? When they decide they are crossing, you are the one to stop. Otherwise, you run over them. When one goes this way, they only know how to, to follow. When they go to feed, they just look down. But goats, when they get to the road, they are very smart, cunning. They turn to the right and to the left and to the right again and they cross the road. <laughs> Goat. Let me tell you, even when bread will cost a thousand, you will never lack. <laughs> but, but you decide which side you are. <laughs> That's why you will never see me with people who say, oh, now look, uh, the cost, uh, I don't know how much it's cost. Who? My God shall supply all my needs. Not some. No. <laughs> Decide which side you are. <laughs> He's a shepherd of sheep. Bible says he guides them to the pasture. But if you guide yourself, that's it. But him, Are you with me? Let me read you a scripture. Um, I can see the way you are looking at me. Matthew 6. Matthew 6, verse 30 to 34. This one, please follow. screen. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive and green today, but tomorrow it is cut off and thrown as fuel into the furnace, Will he not much more clothe you? You. Hey, hey. You of little faith. The problem is faith. 
not God. You know he never supplies according to the economy of Kenya. That's too low. Aye. What do you mean? Kenya. No. At America. No. Our God never lacks. Now, okay, let me first of all finish this scripture. Therefore, do not worry or be anxious. Perpetually uneasy, distracted, saying, what are we going to eat? Or what are we going to drink? Or what are we going to wear? For the pagan Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. But do not worry. For your heavenly father knows that you need them. But first and most importantly, seek, be aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness. His way of doing things, being right, the attitude and character of God. And all these things will be given to you also. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. You see, the thing is, there is trouble for today, and there is trouble for tomorrow and day after. So now, if you start worrying about tomorrow, can you see how you are troubling your anxiety? He only supplies for today. So don't think about the fees that you have to pay tomorrow. One day, one of the parents in our school must have been praying a lot. She's a widow. Her husband we buried. And she was in such need. And she could not get that fee at the time it was needed. And she trusted God to call me. I didn't even know. So she calls me. She finds me, I think, in prayer or something. And she says, you know, I needed, you to, I needed to come and call to see you because I'm in a situation I can pay this fee after about three months or so. You know, I told her, do not worry. I don't want you to think about that fee. Think about it in September. She, where she was, she knelt down. God answers prayer. God positions people. He makes a way. But only if you are not anxious and not lazy. Are you with me? <laughs> hey, he supplies your needs. So you are either in the camp of the just shall live by faith or you are in the other camp. Because there are two camps. There are only two roads in the kingdom. Finally, the fifth benefit or hunger for God, praise him, is God stirs up a move of God. Hunger for God stirs up a move of God in an individual, in a church, in a community, in a nation, in the nations of the earth. Hunger for God stirs up a move of God. The move of God comes to hungry people. And the Holy Spirit responds to hunger. Even God responds to hunger in your life. Invite him to do that work in your life. You can ask for hunger. Moses asked, please show me your glory. You can ask for rain, the rain of God over your life. You can ask for change and transformation. You can ask for eternal life. You can ask to be a man or a woman after God's own heart. You can ask for intimacy with him. You can ask him to fill you with his spirit. You can ask for more of God in your life. You can ask for his presence. You can ask for divine ability to start all over again. You can ask for a second chance. You can ask for revival. 
You can ask God to show himself for you. You can ask God for an intervention. You can ask God for healing. You can ask God for salvation. And I want us to make a prayer in form of a song as you ask for hunger. And I want you to stand on your feet as we and come to an end of this sermon. The worship team will sing this song. These are the songs we used to sing in revival. I had this song. I first heard this song when I was a very young believer. I was so new in the things of God. About two months old. I've never forgotten it. Worship team. I want to ask you, church, to open your mouth and just ask for him. Ask for that. Ask for that. Ask for hunger. Ask for an intervention. Ask him. Ask him for a second chance. Ask him to raise you up again. Ask him. Ask him for hunger. Ask him for revival. Ask him. Ask him to intervene in your family. Ask him to touch your life. Ask him to touch your children. Ask him to touch your faith. Ask him to increase your faith. Ask him. Ask him today. Be desperate. Oh, we are desperate for you, Jesus. And we give you thanks and we give you glory. Come on, church, above your heads. Put your hands together and appreciate Jesus. Come on, give him praise.